Okay, here we go. Let's bake some maps. Right, 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 right. Okay. I have here my low poly mesh. So first thing you need to do is click on that, make sure that's selected. Change from your modeling menu set to your rendering menu set. And then the tool we're looking for is in lighting and shading and it's called transfer maps. So let's give that a little clicky. Wonderful, right. The first thing I'll do is reset this so that we're looking at the same thing. Right, so because um, we had this selected when we opened the tool, it's loaded this in under the target mesh. And whenever you're baking um, normal maps, your low poly mesh will be the target mesh because that's the thing you're looking to keep. So that one goes in there. In the source mesh, I'm just gonna hide that one and bring back the high poly mesh and just stop it being referenced a minute so I can click on it. And I'm going to click on add selected. So that is going to be where it sources the information from and I can just reference that again and bring the uh, the low poly back as well. Right, then you need to choose what kind of map you're after and I want a normal map and we're going to change some settings. So click on the little folder. I do want it in my source images folder. I'm going to call it sampled normals and I don't want an alias pix format because that's a stupid format. I'm going to use a targa. If you've watched any of my other videos you'll know that I feel passionately about the targa format. Click on save and then yeah so then you can choose between object or tangent space normals. Uh, if your assets going to be static then apparently you can use object space. Uh, if it might ever be animated in any way, then you need to use tangent space. Personally, I would say to you, always use tangent space. I can't see a reason that you would use object space. Uh, if anybody knows what that reason is, feel free to leave a comment. Um, but I'm all about the tangent space, so we'll leave that as it is. This bit here, connect maps to a shader uh, and connect it to a new shader. What that will do is once we've baked the normals, it will assign it to a Lambert and that Lambert will be placed on the low poly mesh. So it means we can preview the results straight away. So we'll leave that where it is. Then under Maya Common Output, normally you probably wouldn't want too high of a texture resolution on a barrel, but because it's the only thing that we're interested in, uh, we're going to go fairly high. We'll do a, a 1024 by 1024 map, and the sampling quality we'll do at medium, which should be good enough for what we're doing. Okay, so that's most of the settings done. The only thing we need to look at is um, what's going to be captured within this bake. To check that, you've got for your low poly barrel back up at the top, you've got um, this little display section. Um, at the moment, it's displaying the mesh, which is the actual low poly mesh. Um, and there's another thing called an envelope, which is this pink thing here. I would say show both, but basically what you need to do, if it might for you start off something low, but you can see when it's at 0%, it's not, it, everything needs to be encapsulated within this search envelope, because that's what's gonna be included in your bake. So you need to make sure that basically you can't see any gray, you can only see pink. So in my case, that appears to happen at 3.8. I'm quite happy with that. So that's now set up, I'm happy with that. So what we can do next is bake it. Oh, let me just check in here, is that right? Am I happy with that? Yeah, that's all good. So what we'll do is click on bake and close. And what will happen now is that is sampling and baking the normal data into an image file and assigning that to a shader. So when that's finished, we'll have a look at the result. Okay, so my baker's just finished and I thought I would wait and we would preview the results together. Um, I, I feel like we'll bond more if we do it that way. So, so let's hide the high poly mesh. You can see this is um, the, the low poly mesh, which is, there it is. So what we'll do is that material is already applied, but because we aren't showing textures, we can't see it. So you can either click on this icon here, which is textured, or you can press six on your keyboard, which is what I'm gonna do. And you'll see that that detail that we had on the, the other mesh is now showing through on this one. And let's see what it's looking like on top. So you can see that there are now lines where the planks that we put were. Okay, I think, so I've got a, a dirty black line at the bottom which is probably because um, 
it maybe sticks out a little bit too far there which I could fix in fact I will fix it let's see if we can fix that so I'm going to go back into the high poly and we're going to get oh hang on let's take it out of reference okay edge we're going to get these edges I think that one that one and that one and we're just going to scale them in like that what's the top looking like yeah the top's okay so I've brought that in to hopefully get a cleaner bake so I'll stick that back into reference and now what I can do is I'll just hide that perform the bake again but I should get some different results out of it so let's see I don't know how different but hopefully slightly better so lighting shading uh, transfer maps everything's set up as before so we don't need to bother going through everything again we can just click on bake and close and it'll replace the normal map we have so I'll see you in a sec fingers crossed it'll all be brilliant next okay so that bakes finished um, it's improved it a bit but it's not perfect I think it's um, generally when you've got quite a high angle on this by the time it's textured it won't look as bad so I'm happy with that we've now got a normal map that we can work with okay before we take this into Photoshop for texturing we're going to create uh, one more map for it which I'm going to call a color color ID map which will make it easier to kind of place textures around a bit a bit faster so in order to do that and we'll just do it as quickly as we can we're going to apply some colored materials I'll take that out of reference to um, everything on this so what we'll do is we're just going to go to uh, back into modeling we're going to go mesh and separate so everything's a separate polygon again and we're just going to bang some colors on this so I know that I want the metal to be a separate color so I'm going to assign a new material to that it's going to be a Lambert and I just want it to have a color. Where is that? Lambert 6. So I'm just going to choose quite, you know, bold color. So I'll use red in this case. Okay. And then I'm going to assign existing material to all the ones that are going to have the same material on there. So assign existing material, Lambert 6. Assign existing material, Lambert 6. Right, and then what I want to do is be able to break up the different planks. So this first plank, I'm going to assign a new material to, which will be a Lambert, and the color of this one will be yellow. Why has that not worked? Assign new material, Lambert, yellow. Hey, there we go. Right, and then the one next to it, in fact, let's just assign this. So I'm going to do it to every other one. Okay, so I've done that. Now what I want to do is do the alternate ones with another um, equally kind of contrasting color. So let's assign a new material. Uh, a Lambert and this time I'm going to use green and now I'm going to apply that to all the other alternating planks okay and then I just need to repeat that for the planks on the top and the bottom and I'll be complete So that will make it really easy to pick out different areas of the uh, the map when we're in Photoshop later. So we're going to bake this out to another map. So let's just recombine this. So mesh combine. Uh, I want to give this the name high underscore poly underscore barrel again. And because this is now seen as a new object, it won't be part of that high poly layer anymore. So we're going to make sure it's selected 
right click and add selected objects and now I'll be able to hide that and turn it to reference if I need to. So let's just load in transfer maps again. So we're going to go to um, rendering. We're going to go to lighting, shading and the transfer maps. I'm going to use a different type of map this time. So we'll get rid of the normal. I'm going to use a diffuse map this time and that'll bake the color from one to the other. So the source mesh needs to be the high poly. So let's just load that in. And then we can turn that off for a little while. And then we're going to choose diffuse. And we're going to call this one color ID. But I don't need that capital O there. That's cray cray. And we're going to do a target again and click on save and everything else should be set up fine from what we did before which it is so now we're going to bake that from one to the other let's click on bake okay so the bake's just finished and you can see that it now looks ridiculous but the cool thing is we've now got a little bit of an idea of where that metal would be if you look at the mesh without the texture there's no indication, so even on the UV map, we wouldn't know exactly where to put the, the metallic type, uh, parts of the texture. But we can now see that that's where it'll go. So that's really good. So if I can just show you what we've created uh, in Photoshop. So this is the normal map. There you go. So you can see all that detail is on there that we created, which is lovely. And if we have a look at the color ID map as well. And all the color ID map exists for is so that we can um, sample colors and put stuff there. So we'll, we can create like masks using those colors. It's just about being able to select different areas. So we are now done with the modeling. We are done with the texture baking. All that is left to do is to create the actual materials in Photoshop. So we're going to create the different texture maps. So there'll be a diffuse or albedo map. There will be a roughness map. There will be a metallic map. There will be maybe another kind of map that I'm forgetting. But in the next section, that's what we will be covering. It'll be all about texturing. So hopefully I will see you in the next section for that.